Hey everybody, this is Keith Gleason, creator of the Mighty Mascots and host of the Indie Comics Relay po uh, video cast. Um, and I am doing something different today. I uh, mentioned on the last week's uh, live stream that I wanted to start sharing some lettering techniques to help, uh, you know, indie creators um, with lettering um, or, you know, just want to see how other people do it. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty much all digital at this point with my lettering. I, I, you know, I've learned traditionally how to letter it as well. You know, I did one year at the Joe Kubert School and I uh, learned traditional lettering. Let me tell you, the, the way they used to, to letter back in the day was horrendous. I, I, I don't think anybody, I think it's it would have been tough for indie creators to make books, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, or how they used to letter. But now that it's digital, it makes it makes the job so much easier. Um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is my website. Uh, you can go and check out all my different comics I've worked on. I've lettered um, every single one of my books. I've been lettering uh, my comics since like 2008. Um, so yeah, so check that out if you want. That's HeroEnvy.com and RecklessSidekick.com. All right, so one thing I want to start out with to show uh, to something, some things that people may not know um, that are lettering for the first time um, is this is a great site for letterers. Uh, it's called 1001freefonts.com. You know, I've never checked to see if they actually have 1001, um, but, you know, they have a lot. So, I mean... You know, if you're looking to, like, if you're doing, like, a horror comic and you want to see what kind of fonts they have, you know, you click on the horror link. And, it, I mean, they have pages, like, 10-plus pages. I mean, like, like they got the 28 Days Later kind of font. You know, different things. This is, this is a great site to just, you know, if you need something specific, you know, um, just, you know, for whatever book you're you're trying to make. So, uh, definitely bookmark that tab. Um, another couple of lettering sites I'd like to point out. Um, Blambot. This is a site that was started by Nate Picos, who is also a letter in the industry. There's a lot of mainstream books, Dark Horse, you know, things like that. Um, he he offers a lot of free fonts here, so it's worth um, you know signing up for an account. You know, and if you do, you you do download all the free ones. I, I do recommend, you know, buying a few, you know, just to help Nate out. I mean, you know, he's, you know, it's his business and it's worth definitely, um, you know, paying for some of the better fonts, you know, make your books a little, little more unique, you know. Um, this one is a great one to, um, you know, to use as like just dialogue you know, for just regular uh, people talking, things like that. And they have a ton of different ones for, you know, sound effects and things like that. He also has a lot of resources here and tips of his own. Um, so, you know, in, definitely check it out and uh, support him if you can. Another great site is Comic Craft. Um, they, they do, uh, they do not, they don't give a lot of free ones away. I, you can get a couple. Um, but they do have some really good sound effects here. Um, and they, if you sign up for their um, newsletter and follow them on Facebook, they do have deals all the time, like 50% off here and, you know, things like that. But I mean, look, the, the different kind of like um, sound effects balloons that you can get from these guys um, is really worth it, especially if you're serious about lettering or if you want to make a career of it, or if you just plan on lettering your own books in the future, you know, um, that's one thing I wanted to touch upon is like, you know, I write all my books and, you know, a lot of would be creators have asked me over the years, like any advice I could give them on comics. And I always tell them to learn how to letter your books because, you know, the whole process of comic book making from, when you write a script to when you actually get a finished page it can be months, you know, six months sometimes. And then when you look back at the dialogue you created, sometimes it, it's cringe, you know, it doesn't, you don't really like what you're seeing, you know, you know, your writings evolved a little bit in those past months, or, you know, you, you got the artwork back and it doesn't quite look like what you had in mind. You now have the ability to go in as a letterer, and George Lucas the crap out of that thing, you know? 
um, you know, basically change your dialogue around. I, I know because I've done it multiple times. Um, hell, these last three issues of the Mighty Mascots I just turned into Alterna. I, I did that on all three issues. I've changed dialogue or I've gone in and, you know, done syncs. And, you know, if you've done a comic before, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, definitely support these guys. I know the, you know, some of the, the fonts are a little, look at this, you get 10% off if you sign up for the newsletter. I've already done that. Um, but they're all over in price. Um, you know, I recommend if you, you know, if you got the money, you know, don't just take all the, the free ones and not, you know, throw them a few bucks, get a couple good ones, you know, anyways. All right. So enough of my preaching. So those, check out those sites, bookmark them and, and, and go from there. So let's go to illustrator, which I've kind of already set up some things here. So this is a page uh, from issue four of the mighty mascots It's actually the first page I've already lettered this and turned it in. So this is more of like a practice thing. Um, and, um, you know, I, I prefer lettering an illustrator. I know some people uh, like Photoshop better, but I just, I feel like I have a little more control uh, with illustrator um, than I do with Photoshop. And, you know, the thing with illustrator and Photoshop, um, I know you can get Adobe, you can get a subscription service to Adobe right now. And they're on like um, Adobe Illustrator CS 15 or 16 now. Um, I honestly don't, the, the version I'm using is CS3. I mean, I don't think you need um, the craziest, newest software to just letter comics. You just need a basic version of these softwares. So if you can find them, you know, like the program itself online on eBay or something for cheap, I would do that. That way you don't have to pay like a monthly subscription to Adobe every time you want to letter a book, you know? So, um, so here we go. You know, these are all different windows. I'm not going to get too much into all the different aspects of illustrator, but I will tell you stuff that I do just so you know. Um, the first thing I always do when I import uh, or create a page ready to go for, you know, lettering is I lock down the artwork so that it can't move in case I, you know, have to move the letter, the, the word balloon around and that kind of thing. So if you just highlight it with the direction tool like this and hit control two, um, it'll lock, you know, the, the artwork in its place. Um, you can also zoom in really easy by using control space bar or control alt space bar to move back out. So that's a, just a quick, quick key update. So I have like a couple um, sentences I have already put here. These is this this is not the <laughs> the real dialogue from the comic. I just thought I'd be, it'd do some fun things and show you guys some stuff. Um, so I you know this I'm working on the computer where I don't have a lot of my fonts available, but I do have a basic um, free dialogue font that I use often. I used to use often. I bought it I bought um, a newer one from uh, from uh, Blambot, uh, just so I could have a little more professional look. But if you're just starting out and you want a good dialogue font, I recommend grabbing Anime Ace. It's a, one, a free one you can get off of the Thousand One free fonts. So if you look there, I, I um, you know I just supplied the Anime Ace um, font to the this 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 line of dialogue is you know for the caption box because down here we got the the pirate ship um this is sort of the establishing panel um so you usually want to put like a caption explaining to the audience like what's going on um so uh as far as size of the font um i prefer to letter in uh 10 point size um because a lot of the times when when the the artwork um get shrunk down to the final form that's going to be in a comics comic book, the font is going to shrink anyways. Um, I, I, I've seen today in a lot of mainstream comics is they tend to, to letter in a smaller font. And I think when it, when it actually, the comic goes to press the small, the fonts, the fonts even smaller. So it's, I, I mean, you need like a magnifying glass and, um, you know, a pair of glasses, on top of that, just to read the comics sometimes it's insane. So I'm thinking like, you know, most of the time I do 
point ten. Sometimes I do point nine, depending on how tight the the panels are. Um, and then uh, once you've established the font, um, what I want to do, what you do with a caption box is you try to make it pretty even because when you put the box around it, you know you want it to the 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 words to be kind of balanced. So I usually go in and put it onto a, a different line. The other thing you want to watch for when you do point um, point ten size font is down here. You want the the space between the two sentences to be pretty balanced. So I usually change this uh, to nine. Actually, wait. Let me see. This one now. You want to do like eleven to kind of to kind of keep it. You know, you want it close, but you don't want it on top of each other. So I think that's pretty perfect. Um, and then you know, probably something like you could do at like October nineteen eighty three. So there we go. So there we got a perfect. So it looks pretty square. You know. So. To, to do the caption box over here, there's um, there's a lot of shapes on this. This is the toolbar. There's one right here that's already a rectangle. So you click on that and it, and it, and it brings out this plus shape. And then you can basically draw out the, the rectangle. And there it goes. It comes in as like a black square. So now what you want to do is you want to click on the square and we want to fill it uh, either with white or sometimes you'll do a caption box with like yellow, you know, we do want, want a, little, a little bit of a bright yellow. Let's do bright yellow for now. Um, and then we go. So we have a yellow square and then to do the, the outside of it down here is you'll see in the, in the bottom here, you'll see where the yellow is showing as the box here. If you highlight the, looks like the ghostbuster symbol, <laughs> You click on this, and this will put the stroke, what's called the stroke, uh, forward. And then usually I click on black, so we create a black stroke around the box like this. Now the sh uh, the outline of the caption box and on the word balloons, I usually do one point, which it, where the points are right over here, where you can make it. So I can make it thicker if I want to do like a really thick, you know. But one one point is perfect and i've had no problems with that in the past so now what you want to do is you want to put this you want to put the lettering inside of it so to to do this there's a simple thing you just click on the box you hit object arrange and you send it to back and now you have the the lettering in there um, and now i want to make the lettering centered so if you highlight the lettering and hit control control shift c it will align it so now it looks balanced it's it's centered you know it's uh you know it just looks nice so if you take if i if i go in real close this looks very nice you know it's nice and centered so now usually once that's done i will slide this over usually a little bit over you want to leave a little bit of breathing room between the words and, the, and the, the caption box. And then I'll grab this with the direction tool and I slide it in just to make it a little more tighter. And then uh, I, I'll zoom out a little bit and then we're going to put it over here on the establishing panel. So you, you, you select it, you move it in here. Sometimes like with kind of like this situation where it's a little bigger than the panel, I could, tighten it if i want and then make it fit with within the panel here itself but i kind of like the the way it looks right now so i think i'm going to go about uh, outside of the panel and kind of put it like maybe right there so in this situation it's not going to show up um you know everything so what you got to do is you got to select it all and this time you go to object arrange bring to front and now it's ahead on top of the artwork Sometimes you could do it like, oh, I don't really like it. Like this. So let's move it over. Let's let's center it. There we go. So I think, yeah, I think that. Um, you know what? Now I'm rethinking it. I think maybe we should put it inside uh, the the panel. So I'm gonna make that a little tighter. 
and make this a little tighter. And then we can go down here. Now it's sort of in. So it's something like this where I may want to actually get it in there. I'll grab, I'll select it all, and then I will hit shift and go to the corner here and just shrink it down a little bit. So there we go. And now what I tend to do, just center it in the panel. There we go. And it looks like it's even on all the sides here. And it's not butting up. The the word the thing you want to do with lettering is you don't want to do, you don't want to you don't want to, you don't want to invade the image. You want to be kind of subtle. You lettering should not make an impression when you, you know you should it should blend in with the panel itself. Um, and then I'll, I'll click this because now if you look down here, let me zoom into this. Zoom in. Uh, hang on. If you zoom in. Oh, I actually can't zoom in on that. Interesting. Okay. Um, if you if you look here, it looks like now the the the, the font size is nine point eleven. So in this case, since I shrunk it down from ten to nine, I'm just going to make it an even nine, just so it's not, you know, in these weird decimals. And I'll change this to ten, so it's not ten point two, you know. And there you go, and you got the caption box. The other fun things you can do with caption boxes, you know, you, you could do it like that. Other times I've uh, selected the caption box and I've made it all black like this. And then I've put in it, I've put it behind the, you know, the, the, the original um, caption box and then you move it to the back and you get this kind of like cool shadow effect with the caption box, you know. Sometimes you can even do like um, stretch it out like this, so it looks more. It's like um, I don't know, like a, it's like a file or something, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just a few different things I've done in the past, and like I said, you could change this if you go back down here and make the the inside on the top. You can make it white if you want. You can make it green, blue, whatever, whatever you know, whatever color you know, you're working with, you know, that kind of thing. So now let's, let's look at the word balloons. So this is a thing, a dialogue um, that I just wrote down right now, kind of just being kind of funny because uh, Captain Honey Flakes would never say this. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is this was all one sentence. I'm going to separate it. So I'm going to put that as there. And I'm going to put that original line right there just so we can see this. All right, so let me zoom in so we can take a look at this a little closer. Oops, I put a little space there by accident. Okay, so I'm going to select this, and we're going to change this to Anime Ace. So you can either do it here down in the character box or up here, whatever makes more sense for you. So change that to Anime Ace. Um, we're going to go to 10 points. So I'm going to scale that down. Another way you can do it real quick is if you um, you select this and you hit the dropper tool, you can go over and click to this, which you've already have set up, and it'll set it up for you. Now it's centered. It's nine nine uh, point font, and it's a uh, ten ten points, you know, between the two lines. Um, but I want to make this, like I said, I usually letter a ten point, so I'm gonna bring it back up to 10 and bring this up to 11. Okay, one thing to watch for, you may hear this term, it's called like uh, crossbar eyes. And what they're talking about when they when they said that is um, when you use the, you know, the eye as, if it, as like, uh, you know, if it's like the beginning of a sentence or, you know, if you're referring to yourself, it has these crossbars at the top. Whereas the eyes and right like right here and mighty mascots don't. So that's a lowercase I as far as like this kind of font goes. So that's one thing you want to watch out with with lettering because a lot of a lot of times you know you want it to be right because you're cutting and pasting from the script a lot. So you want to make sure that the writer, if it's not yourself, you want to make sure the writer has put it properly like the the eyes are capitalized in the right spots and the the 
the other eyes are not capitalized in the right spots. So, um, so this one, so I just wanted to make sure that the eye is a crossbar eye like that. So, um, the secret to lettering too, a good, a good, uh, word balloon is you want to balance it. So the shape of a word balloon should be the shape of a, like a diamond. Um, and what I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So, um, to get this, the way I always do it is I, I shift the alignment so that it's all the way to the left. So you can do that by by hitting um, control, use control. Okay, so yeah, control shift L and that will align all the dialogue to the left. And the reason I do that, I'm gonna show you why, just so you can see, so you can make the perfect diamond shape. So. The way to do that is to start small at the top and then gradually build the middle out and then small at the bottom. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna backspace and then hit enter, right? So then I'm gonna go over here between these two words, backspace, enter. I'm gonna make these two words, backspace, enter. And then to make it's smaller on the bottom. I'm going to go here, backspace, enter. And it's sort of a diamond shape here. Let me see. Can we make this a little better somewhere else? Uh, we can also, we could try doing this. And moving that. It works a little better. Okay, so now that we have it like this, see, and you see what I mean by the diamond shape, it's kind of going like this. Like the word balloon goes boop, like almost like a diamond shape. So now if you hit control shift C and center it, you have a good word balloon, you know, a shape of a word balloon. So now to make the word balloon, go back to where the shape uh, tool is in rectangle. If, if you click and hold on it, it's going to open up the other shapes and you're going to grab an eclipse tool. So... You take the cross again, and then you kind of go over it like this. And so you kind of just form your balloon. Um, and then I will hit dropper tool. I will hit this caption box just so I can do this. And then I'm going to make, instead of yellow, I'm going to make this white. And then if you send it to the backs by hitting object, arrange, send to back. And now you have your word balloon. So one thing you want to do is after you have the shape is you kind of go in and you don't want a perfect oval shape. You want like it to look kind of organic. So what I do is I play around with it once I finish making it. So I'm going to do push this up a little bit. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to move this over. Right. And then if I go up here and I hit the white uh, direction tool, you can actually click on each area and kind of shape it even more. So what I'll do is I'll go to the top here, click on this, and it creates these handles. So if you hit shift and grab one of the handles, you can pull it out. So what I do is I pull the edge out a little bit on both sides here, kind of make it a little more organic. You can do this on the sides here as well, but I usually only find that I need to do the top and bottom. Sometimes you need to do the sides. So I'll do the same thing at the bottom, pull it out and pull it out. So see how you have like a little more of an organic balloon here and then I can kind of drag these in. Kind of want to leave a little space so that the, you know, the words aren't like you know, cropping up right to the edge of the, the word balloon. Although sometimes you have to do that because of the dialogue. Um, sometimes a, a, a writer gets carried away with himself and, you know, you know, like, uh, like an Alan Moore with, you know, a million things of dialogue. Um, another thing that you should be aware of is sometimes um, writers, and if you're the writer, um, you sometimes want to bold certain words. Um, so like something like this, I, I would probably, you know, I, I just love being the leader of the mighty mascot. So maybe leader would be a good word to, to bold. So to do that, you would just get the text selection tool again and highlight the word leader. And if you go down to anime ace here and do the drop down box, you can hit bold. So now you've got 
the word leader bolded like that. So, um, so we'll pull this out. And we're going to place this down over here where Honey Flakes is talking. So this seems like a good spot, this general area. Um, like I said, you don't want to crop on anything that's important to the story. Like once you lay it out, then you hit object, arrange, bring to front, and now you have it. Now you can see where it is. But you know, once you lock down your artwork, you can move it around freely and just kind of experiment where it's gonna where it's gonna, you know, make the most impact. But then we also have this other line of dialogue. So before I make the tale, which is the part where it's, you know, the person's talking, um, I would think we want to add this other one and um, maybe either connect, maybe connect the balloons together, you know? Um, so in order to do this real quick, I'm going to highlight this, use the dropper tool and click on the text. It's going to create the same, uh, same size, the same, um, you know, width between the words, all that fun stuff. I'm going to go Control Shift L so that I can put it to the left and make the perfect balloon shape. So let's try going here. Down there, let's go between these two. And a lot of this is just you eyeballing it and figuring out what the perfect diamond shape would be. So I think we'd go after this word. And sometimes you have to go, I've had to go, I've gotten to the bottom of the sentence and I've had to go back and redo it because it doesn't quite look right. Um, and I think if you put this last one there, that'll be pretty good. So now if you do control shift C, oh, oops, wait a second here. And do this, control shift C, and then it makes it centered. Um, you look, uh, if there's any other words you want to bold, um, yeah, I don't think it needs it. All right, so let's form another balloon. Click on the oval shape, go around it. And then also you can use the dropper tool to just drop down here and click on the balloon you've already created. And you've got the, the, the colors already ready to go. So I'm going to do the, the white selection tool, go in here and pull these handles out a little bit, kind of make it a little more organic. I learned that a little bit from uh, Joe Caramagna and Chris Giarusso. They told me that you don't ever want to make a perfect oval. You kind of want to make it so it looks like it's, you know, a little bit organic. You know, you don't want, you don't want to make it just look like you threw an oval on there. I've seen so many independent comics that do that. It's just noticeable and just doesn't look good. So then we're going to send it to back, object, arrange, send to back. And now we're going to bring in the, the, the balloon a little bit just so it looks. I think the top looks okay. Let's bring this in on the side. Grab this, bring this in a little bit. And then we're going to bring the bottom up a little bit. So you want to just have like this little bit of white space around it. You know, oops, didn't mean to do that. If you ever move anything or mess anything up, like I just did like that, you hit control Z and it would go back to what you were doing. Okay, so let's pull out a little bit. Let's take a look on where this one can go. I'm thinking right here would be pretty good. Um, you know, and we can butt the, the two balloons together and then I'll show you guys how to do that as well. So let's, let's try putting it, uh, let's try putting it right here because we don't want to go on C-Rat too much either. So once you have it placed, object, arrange, bring to front. All right. So now we got these together. Um, so the other thing, so now when I, so you can either connect them by two ways. You can put like a long line in between, or you can put them on top like that. So what I'll, sh I'll show you how to do this as well. If you want to join them. First thing I would do is click both of these, hit object, arrange, bring the front because once you start shaving into the balloons it's gonna put them behind and it's you know just pain so what i do is i go in real close like this click on the top balloon and down here by the eraser there's a there's a um, scissor tool so select that and then you look at where the balloons kind of align i'm going to click this 
and I'm going to click this. Then you hit the white selection tool, get rid of this line. Okay. Sometimes you have to hit it twice. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to grab the balloon behind it, click on that, take the scissor tool again, and go a little bit above the, the previous balloon, like right here and right here. Delete that. So now you have a balloon that looks like this. So to join these two, you want to grab the end using the white selection tool. There's a point here. You grab that. You hit shift. You grab the point of this one. And you hit control J, joins them together. Then you go to these other two. You find that end point and this end point and hit control J to join those together. Now to make this a little more less jagged, you click on the entire the entire um, word balloon and you go over here to the stroke um, window. And you, if you see these two things right here, if you click these, watch what happens to this jagged line. It, it, it smooths them out, makes them a little more nicer to look at. So now if we scroll back out, We got two balloons joined together. And now all we need is, oh, let's put this back here. So that's good. <laughs> so let's get it. Oop. I am doing it because I'm doing with the white selection. White selection tool will only grab points on the thing. So like to show you what I'm talking about. So if you went like this with the white selection tool and you try to pull it, you're going to get that. But the, the black selection tool will take the entire image, no matter where you click it. See, it takes that whole box or it takes this, you know. So if you go like this, you move it down here, back where it was supposed to be. And you bring it to front, object, the range, bring to front. And there we go. We could center this a little more. It's, like I said, it's not my ideal choice. I wouldn't do the the shadow in the back, but sometimes it, I do it did it in my past books. Like I think I would get rid of this. This was the book I'm gonna do right, you know, right now if I was gonna release this and I would go down here. Part of it, you know, is like learning 2D design a little bit too. Like so you can, you know, looking for these space, you know, trying to make uh the word balloons part of the art rather than distracting from the art. Um, Okay, so let's make the tail for honey, honey flakes here, and then we'll finish this first lettering, uh, lettering um, lesson. Um, very similar way to do the tail is how I connected these two balloons. So I'm gonna try to find, so we wanna have it coming to his mouth. Um, one of the things I've learned over the lettering is you, you kinda wanna make the tail come out of this, from the center of the balloon. So which would be like right here. Um, and you kind of look to see where that would be. So if we, you know, you want to do is kind of mouth, you want to do from the center of the balloon to the mouth. So I would probably do the, 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 the tail like right around here. So click on this, uh, go in a little tight. So I'm going to go like this. So you're going to use the, the scissor tool again. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen. Here we go. Okay. So let me go kind of like this. So you click here and then you go over here, maybe about a quarter of an inch, you click the other side, take the white selection tool, uh, delete that uh, thing you made. And now we're gonna use the pen tool to create the tail. So click on this. And if you click here, if you can see it real close, let me go in a little closer here. When you go to an, an end point, you see the, the, the pen tool, has like a slash line instead of an X. That means it's lined up right on the, the point. So click there once you have it lined up. And now you, you're part of the balloon. So scroll it a little bit. What I do is I usually come in, you know, kind of close to the, the mouth, as close as I can. And you create a point towards the person and you kind of curve the line a little bit using the, the directional tools here. You know, because you've always seen like the word balloons have the pointed tails. So that looks pretty good. Then you go back in here, remove the 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 um the, the, the handles. 
by clicking on it again. Okay. Then I hit uh, right click, group the image together, right? Okay. And then you're going to come in here on the other side, click on this, and then kind of go down to the where this point is. You don't want to do it on top of it because it'll join it together and you don't really want to join it yet. You just want to shape the, the tail so it looks good. So click here, oops, hang on. click here, hold it, and then kind of shape this side of it so that you get kind of like uh, an image that, you know, like the tail kind of goes with the, the balloon itself. So go in close, click on this to get rid of the, the, the handles, right? So now you have an image like this. And then you can actually just connect them like this, okay? Sometimes you can actually just leave the balloon like that. So some people like to do that kind of a tail where it's like more kind of squared like that. But if you don't like that, you can um, just click on these and, and just put them together. And then you can use the handle to kind of like further make the tail look a little, you know, a little more curvy like that, you know. And there you go. That's uh, that's how you would do a word balloon, or that's how I do it, anyways. Now I know there's other people that kind of create the tails ahead of time, or they'll have like, um, you know, they'll have their a ton of like different balloons, you know, already made on their page. You can do that too. I mean, like I said, take a look around, go on YouTube, go on, um, you know, the internet and Google lettering. Uh, there's a million techniques. This is just what I do. And what I learned, you know, how I letter with Illustrator. So that's pretty much it for now. So let's um, wrap this up. So I'm going on, on almost 40 minutes here. So um, if you're still with me and you haven't bored and haven't left, thanks for staying. Um, I hope this helps you in some way. Um, you know, please comment. Let me know um, if you want to see more techniques on how I do sound effects and things like that. Definitely let me know. Um, and um, yeah, any other questions or comments are welcome, you know. Um, all right, everybody, um, that's it for now. I'll be back with another review this week. And then we got two more live streams coming up this Wednesday. The channel's been busy, busier than ever. So I guess that's a good thing, you know. Hopefully we can get up to a thousand subscribers soon and get those watch hours in so we can get monetized and reach even more heights and promote more indie comics and, you know, all that fun stuff. So thanks everybody. And, um, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one.